Hey everyone, welcome to the first video for section 9.5. So in this section we're looking at predator prey models. I'm going to see how we can write a model for it and then do the sort of linear, linearization approach that we've done in the last couple sections and see how we can analyze the model and see what happens over time. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So here we're talking about predator prey models. And by this I mean we have two species that interact with each other in the form of predator prey. And we use that as a basis for setting up our system of equations that we want to solve. So the general assumption is that if I look at x being my prey, then my x just grows normally on its own, like exponential model. But on the other hand, my predator dies out on its own. Because without the prey present, then the predator is going to die out in time because it doesn't have enough food. And then we want to look at the interaction term. So the interaction terms, again, we're assuming it's sort of proportional to the product. And we're going to get that it's going to negatively affect the prey and positively affect the predators. So our final system model turns out to be something like dx dt equals ax for the normal growth rate minus an alpha xy because that is the the product of x and y gives us how, how basically how many times they interact with each other and alpha is the conversion rate from interactions to dead prey and then dy dt equals negative cy plus a gamma xy where gamma is the conversion rate from interactions to new predator species, new predator organisms. So there's our system and this A, alpha, C, gamma are all positive constants. And how the constants look obviously determine what your system is going to do. So let's go ahead and try to analyze this system just by the Jacobian method we had before. So critical points. Well the first equation just becomes x times A minus alpha y equals zero and the second becomes y times gamma x minus c equals zero. So if I have x equals, I can have x equals zero or a minus alpha y equals zero, y equals zero or gamma x minus c equals zero. But if a and c are both positive constants, then if x is zero over here, I can't have this being zero because this should just be minus c. So I have to have y equals zero. And then if I have this one over here, then y can't be zero, so I have to pick the second one here. So I only get two critical points here. I get the origin, and I get the non-zero term, where x has to be c over gamma, and y has to be a over alpha. Because if y is a over alpha, then this term goes away, and if x is c over gamma, then this term vanishes. So I get my two critical points there. Now let's look at our Jacobian matrix. So it's j of x, y, just taking the derivatives. Gives me This is gonna be a minus alpha y, negative alpha x, gamma y, gamma x minus c. Now if we look at the origin, so we're going to look at our two critical points and see what kind of matrices we get out of them. So look at the origin, j of 0, 0 is just going to be a, 0, 0 minus c. This is a saddle point with the in direction along the y-axis and out along the x. And this makes sense because if we're at the origin and we have a couple of predators but no prey, we're going to come into the origin. Because if we have predators but no prey, the predators can't eat anything and they're going to die off. Similarly, if we are uh, near the origin but we're on the x-axis, which means we have prey but no predators, then the prey is just going to take off and grow. So the out direction is along the x-axis, the in direction is along the y, and in the middle we have our saddle point sort of curves. Now let's look at the other point. If I look at j of c over gamma a over alpha and plug that in, I am going to get zeros on the diagonal because those are just going to vanish right away. And then alpha x is going to be alpha c over gamma with a negative sign and gamma, gamma y is going to be gamma a over alpha. And if we look at our sort of setup, what we're going to see is this is going to be a center because it's going to be r squared minus the determinant is going to be what the um, character's polynomial looks like. So it's going to be a center. We're going to get um, purely imaginary roots, and that's what we're going to get out of it. Now, at the beginning of this chapter, we talked about what happens to different sorts of models for critical points when we go from linear to nonlinear. And the issue here is for a center, we don't know what's going to happen. It could be stable, it could be unstable, it could still be a center. We don't know what's going to happen nearby. We just know that the linearized model gives a center, which means we don't know what's going to happen. So in order to figure out what's actually going to happen, let's look at the 
fully nonlinear equation, see if we can do trajectories on the nonlinear equation. So we had for our equations dx dt is x a minus alpha y and dy dt is y gamma x minus c. And so now we're going to try to do the trajectory thing we did at the end of section 9.2. So for trajectories, try to solve dy dx equals dy dt over dx dt, which is y gamma x minus c over x a minus alpha y. Now it turns out this guy is separable. And if you separate, you get a over y minus alpha dy equals gamma minus c over x dx. And then you can solve this, so I get an a log of y minus alpha y equals gamma x minus c log of x plus a constant. And now what can be proven, and we're not going to prove it here, is that these guys actually do make closed curves in the xy plane. Which means we actually do get some sort of periodic orbits coming out of these guys. Now if we go back to looking just at our linear system, since we know we're going to get closed curves, we can sort of analyze this nonlinear part based on our linear part because we know it's now going to be fairly similar because we got closed curves here. And if we look at trying to solve out the linear equation, you can go through this whole work with this center and get general solutions. And what you will end up with is something like this. So the solution to the linear system, where we linearize around the point, looks like x of t is this formula, and y of t is this. When you do the whole combining into a single sine and cosine term, that kind of thing. And so what we see here is we can get some nice properties out of the linear system based on these equations, and we can sort of approximate, approximately say that they hold for the nonlinear system as well. So what can we say out of this? So we can say from here, the period of oscillation, at least for this system, is 2 pi over root ac. So to give us an idea of how long it takes for this cycle to repeat itself. B, the predator population lags behind by a quarter of a cycle. And this just comes from the fact that the predator population is a sine, while the prey is a cosine of the same argument. So cosine's always ahead by a quarter of a cycle ahead of sine. And then the last point is the average value of the populations is the equilibrium value, which is also what you would expect because you're oscillating around this point that if you average them out, you'd get the center point as it was. So that's sort of the model that we have here as a whole. Now, a couple of things that have been done in like the science area to sort of analyze this, the problem is we still have a center, right? And so since we have a center, the periodic orbits are kind of tenuous. And what I mean by that is that if the model isn't exactly right, you're probably not going to get periodic orbits. The fact that we get periodic orbits means because the model follows exactly this sort of setup that gives us periodic orbits. So if the model's off by a little bit, may not get periodic orbits. And the issue is when you mess up a center, you don't know if you're going to get stability or instability. Right? That is the main issue with centers, that when you when you knock them a little bit, you either get instability or stability just based on which way you bump it. So you don't know if the model you get is going to end up being stable, as in you can have coexistence, or unstable, as in things are going to run away and you're going to kill off one population entirely based on your model. And there have been different models that have been developed to sort of try to answer these questions. But they're obviously more complicated and they're harder to analyze in a setting like this. All right, so that's the point for this video is give you an introduction to the predator prey models. In the next video, we'll do an example with I'll pick some constants, we'll solve it out, we'll see what we get, and we'll see that we get the exact result here that we wanted to get for this sort of setup. So thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one.